Hey folks, welcome back. Today's video is focused on something I've been testing for a while and I think it's a solid update for anyone working with Comfy UI. But before we dive in, if you enjoy content like this, consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. It really helps us grow and keep bringing you high quality content. We're going to walk through the Flex.1 Alpha Redux adapter, also called Redux 2, developed by Ostris. It's a new take on the original Redux style adapter, but this time it's been built from scratch for Flex.1 Alpha and, yes, it's also fully compatible with Flux.1 Dev. Let's start with the basics. Flex.1 Alpha is a refined, de-distilled model. It's designed for high quality generation and comes with a major plus. It's licensed under Apache 2.0. That means you can use it freely, even in commercial projects with no licensing headaches. That kind of flexibility is rare in the diffusion space, especially when we're talking about models trained with attention to detail. Now, let's talk about what's changed with Redux. The previous Redux adapter created by Black Labs used, the Siglip Vision Encoder at 384x 384 resolution. That setup worked well for its time, but it had its limits in terms of visual fidelity and detail retention. This new version Redux 2 upgrades the encoder to Siglip 2, and more importantly, it bumps the resolution up to 512, x 512. That might sound like a small change, but in practice, it gives the model more room to understand textures, facial structure, and fine background elements. You'll notice sharper outputs, more consistent styles, and overall better alignment with the original source image, especially when doing style transfers. Let me show you how it works in Comfy UI. To get started, you'll need a few things. First, install the custom node from this repo at GitHub called Advanced Vision. Then, download the Siglip 2 Vision encoder from Hugging Face and place it in your Comfy UI models, clip, vision, folder. Grab the Flex Alpha model checkpoint and drop it into Comfy UI models checkpoints. And finally, take the, the style model file. This is your style adapter and place it in the Comfy UI models style models folder. Once all of that's done, load the Flex Redux workflow file included in the repo. That workflow gives you a starting point. You can customize further depending on your use case. Now here's where it gets interesting. Instead of the usual prompt heavy workflows, Redux allows you to guide your generations with an image as the main input. For example, I started with a portrait of a woman with no specific prompt other than high quality photo. The adapter recreated the image in the same style preserving hair color, background tone, clothing elements, and skin texture without copying the image exactly. What's important here is that it doesn't replicate pixel by pixel. It interprets the image through the vision encoder, giving you something that feels close, but is clearly a new generation. That's a huge help when working with reference material that you can't directly reuse due to rights or style limitations. You can adjust the influence of the style using the apply style model node. If you keep the strength high, the generated image will closely match the original's composition and structure. If you want to shift poses, compositions, or facial orientation, reduce the strength and the model will allow more variation. Just note that a lower strength also softens the style transfer effect. That brings us to a key use case. Let's say you're working on a LoRa training dataset and you've got a limited number of images with a very specific look. Using Redux, you can generate dozens of stylistically coherent variations from a single input image. That gives your LoRa training much richer visual diversity without having to find or create more examples manually. 
It's also a great tool for pose augmentation, especially when combined with character lauras. And if you're like me, testing different poses for a character with a defined look, Redux gives you a fast and consistent way to iterate. You don't need to rework prompts or hope that ControlNet gets everything aligned just right. The vision encoder handles most of the interpretation. I've also tested Redux with various LoRa's running in parallel. It plays nicely, meaning you can stack your favorite style or character LoRa on top of the Redux adapter. That allows you to pass not just a look, but also structural context like head tilt, eye direction, or lighting mood. Now, let's address a common question. Can't I just use image to image with a high denoise level? You can, but the result is different. Image to image with high denoise tends to drift further from the original and often loses key details unless you prompt it very carefully. Redux, on the other hand, doesn't need a strong prompt. The SIGLIP2 encoder carries the visual weight. It's a much more deterministic way to get styled output with fewer moving parts. And one last point worth noting. This adapter was trained entirely with AI toolkit on a single 3090 GPU. That's a big deal for anyone looking to create their own adapters. It proves that you don't need an enterprise setup to build a capable vision model. Ostris made the config public, so if you want to train your own version, maybe with your own data set or encoder choice, you can. I wouldn't call this model perfect. You'll still get the occasional miss in terms of facial expression or hand structure, especially at lower style strengths. But overall, the quality is consistent and it feels like a meaningful step forward, especially for people who want more control over visual style without adding more complexity to their workflow. So, should you use it? If you're already using Comfy UI, and especially if you're experimenting with image-guided generation, LoRa training, or dataset creation, Redux is worth having in your toolkit. It saves time, delivers consistent results, and opens the door to new creative workflows without requiring a whole new set of tools or hardware. That's it for today's deep dive. If you want to try the Redux adapter yourself, all the links are in the description. I'll also include a basic workflow to get you started. Let me know in the comments how you're using ITER if you have fine-tuned your own version, and if this helped, feel free to share it with someone working in the same space. Please consider, like, and subscribe the channel if you like content like this. See you in the next one.